Sheila, to kick things off, could you share more about your career journey and how did you get to your current role? Interesting. I actually started in my career around the same way as most accountants do, with a big four. But where I started to differ was to join a small stack listed company that was part of a very large group of organizations in Singapore belonging to one of the Singapore tycoons. And at that organization, I had the opportunity to help a lot of things, including M&A activities, uh, SGX compliance, statutory compliance, legal requirements. That opens me up to a whole lot of interesting things that I was doing all the time. By the time I moved to GES, which is another company that I joined prior to Interplex, it's a manufacturing company. And my background with M&A activities, compliance, actually allows me to grow into a much larger organization. And when the company was subsequently sold, I joined a private equity group to take MTech Engineering Private, and that's renamed as Interplex. Did a lot of very fun things when I was there. Again, M&A activities, um, raised funds, made acquisitions, especially cross-border. And this one was a large one where we acquired companies with operations in the US, Europe, um, China, basically all over the world. So that was a cross-border M&A and it was really fun. Did an MTM program. And that actually rounded up my career and also ended up being deputy CEO of that organization. That it was in manufacturing. I love manufacturing. There are so many things happening in a day. There are always challenges that keeps you occupied. Um, but when the company was sold to private equity, I decided to step back, take a break from work, uh, focus a little bit on voluntary work. I'm still with them. I'm still the finance committee member of the Asian Women's Welfare Association. But then the opportunity came along for me to join Raffles in 2000. And I took it because I think the healthcare services industry is actually going places. Um, unlike manufacturing, which is actually quite a mature industry in healthcare, especially private healthcare within Southeast Asia, other than Singapore, where it's relatively mature, is actually pretty much underserved in some of the regions in which we operate. So I think there are great opportunities there. Yeah, just listening to your career journey is so fascinating, right? For one, you're one of the very few select CFOs who have done uh, a CEO role, right? Where you manage the business uh, when you were the deputy CEO of Interplex. Then now stepping into a, a CFO role in, in Raffles, you are totally in a different industry and and giving so much to the community as well. So thank you for that. Thank you, Fabian. Very interesting that it's different. I think the challenges are also different with um, the respective industries, not least because um, the timing for joining healthcare was really, I won't say fortuitous, but um, I joined right at the beginning of a pandemic. We're still in it. We have pivoted our operations to support various COVID activities on top of running our day-to-day -day operations and keeping things going. It's been a challenge, but it's also been a learning curve. But I have had fun. I think throughout my career, the most important takeaway I've had was I've always enjoyed what I've done. You joined Raffles Medical Group more than two years ago. And as we all know, it was the onset of the pandemic. Not sure if you knew the magnitude of the responsibilities you were about to undertake. But could you tell us about your journey in Raffles Medical Group? Very interesting question, Fabian. Um, I was totally unaware of what I was signing up for. As my chairman himself likes to put it, Sheila, you didn't sign up for this. Um, at the beginning, no one thought that the pandemic would be as long drawn up as it would be. I mean, all of us have been through SARS. We kind of expected maybe a six month duration, then things will normalize. But things very quickly unraveled. I mean, within the first couple of months, there was a huge shortage of, um, you know, personal protection equipment, um, countries becoming very, very protective of what they have. And then we realized that there's a huge shortage of masks and uh, critical protection equipment for our own key uh, frontline workers. And at the same time, our business was being affected because suddenly people were scared to travel. And then we had the circuit breaker very early on. 
foreign patients couldn't seek treatment in Singapore. And therefore, my takeaway from that period and even up to now is that as a business, regardless of whether you're in healthcare or not, it is very important that you must remain agile, you must be able to pivot, and you must be able to move your business towards where the needs are, and you need to be very flexible in terms of um, how you allocate resources into where the demand is required and then step down on where the demand is not there. Very, very interesting lesson. Oh, 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 oh,